Merci beaucoup, monsieur. Je vous en prie, madame. Is there any city in the world that you're not familiar with? Very few. You know, as I told you, I've never had any real, real roots in my life. My parents were very elderly. I was born, and my father, I have very little memory of him at all. Now, after he died, my mother became ill, quite seriously. And it got, it got progressively worse. So by the time I got, got out of college, she was already in a nursing home. And I had no real home to go to. So I decided to come here to Europe. And I have spent a good deal of my adult life living here and looking for American companies with foreign offices. It's a shame you didn't get to know your father better. It's such an, an important relationship. My memory of my father is very dim. Do you see your mother often? Oh, yes. I try to see her every time I get to New York and uh, for various holidays, but in her condition, she doesn't always know I'm there or even who I am. It's very sad. Well, I don't want to talk about sad things. My mother would be very happy to know that I finally found someone to wear her locket. And she would be very disappointed to know that once I'd given it to her, you decided not to wear it. No, I tried to explain <laughs> that. I know, I know. It's just that I love seeing you wear that locket. It, it was it was foolish of me to take it off. It was, I don't know, going home and getting back to reality. Well, before you get back to reality and home in Springfield, you and I have to have a very serious talk. Oh. And right now, I'd like to walk along the River Seine and give you a tour of the most beautiful city in the world. And we are going to talk every step of the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to, but no amount of talking is to get me to change my mind. Well, as you've probably heard by now and learned by now, I can be very, very stubborn, right? <laughs> I, I know this wonderful little bistro, and they serve espresso, and we can sit there oh, till dawn and done. drink and One talk. Mark? Oh, there must be some mistake. Well, don't you remember me? Oh, I'm Why sorry, there must be some mistake. Come on, Jennifer. <clears throat> Well, I think I've done just about enough work for today. But Grandma and I got an awful lot of stuff, and you're going to have to go through and look through the things that you might find important. Uh, oh, come on. <laughs> Listen, why don't we go over to Uncle Ed's and have a swim now? Now, that's a wonderful idea. <laughs> hello. Well, hello, Hi, man. Hi. Well, Hi. home. Uh, Mike asked me to drop by with these. They're records of the household accounts we took care of for Hope while you were away. I think you'll find they're all in order. Oh, I'm sure they are. Thank you, dear. When are you going to move into Mrs. Gavin's house? Oh, probably as close to the 1st of July as possible if we get everything done that we have to get done. Hmm. Listen, Alan and I are going to go over to Uncle Ed's for a swim now. Would you like to join us? Well, that sounds wonderful. Unfortunately, I promised myself to go to Tony's karate class. <laughs> Fortunately, however, I think I'm not going to make it in time, but I want to try and surprise Hillary after class. Well, I wish you luck one way or the other. <laughs> um, listen, if uh, Alan Michael wakes up, would you please bring him over to the pool? Absolutely, dear. Great, thanks. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Nice to see you, Derek. Derek, can I get you a glass of iced tea or anything? Thank you, Bert. I, I really can't. How are things going between you and Hillary? I know you're living apart now, trying to work something out. I hope you can. Well, I hope so, too. You know, I went along with Hillary's idea of trying to put some more space between our problems, but I think all we've managed to do is put more space between ourselves. There's a real distance there, Bert, and uh, I can feel it growing. I'm sorry. But maybe that's the way it just has to be, at least for a while. Leanne, uh, can I talk to you for a minute? Oh, uh, she's about to change. Yeah, you can do that later. Excuse me. I hate it when you do that to me. What? You know exactly what I'm talking about, giving me orders like that. I resent it. If you don't think anyone else notices, you're wrong. Well, I just wanted to remind you of the, phone of the conversation we had in your car on the way to the hospital this morning when I drove you there. Uh, Floyd is about to make it real big now. I want him to start acting like it. I want him out of that hospital, and I want him out of the Reardon boarding house. I want you to convince him that he move, needs to move into a house where he can entertain properly. That isn't Floyd's style at all. Well, it should be. He's so in love with you right now, he'll do just about whatever you tell him to do. I want you to convince him that you don't want him working at that hospital anymore, that you want him to move into a house with a little more class. Do you understand? And I'm leaving it up to you, Candy, to see about changing Floyd's image. I love Floyd just the way he is. 
Well, that's really sweet, but I don't think he'd feel the same way about you if he knew what you were when I met you, or that you're Andy Norris's used merchandise. I want you to start putting the pressure on now, not tomorrow, today. I'll be looking for results. Rather I might say that. Where? Hi, Tim. Where's uh, Morgan today? Well, as a matter of fact, I ran into her on camp's afternoon. And she said she probably wasn't going to be here. She's got a lot of back work to make up and a lot of advance work to get because she's going to be going to New York again mm -hmm. in the day after tomorrow. Really? I uh, didn't know she was leaving again that early. You see her uh, new cover in New View. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. As a matter of fact, it's already sold out on campus. Somebody put the cover yeah. up on the student union bulletin board. Well, that doesn't surprise me in the least. I think it's a real sizzler. I think she's going to be a top-notch model one of these days. In fact, if I were Kelly, I think I would uh, quit the hospital business and just manage her career, you know? Well, that's not his style. No matter what Morgan does, he's going to be a top-notch doctor. I didn't mean it as a put-down, Hillary. Why are you so defensive? Excuse me, i got to get out of these clothes. Excuse me. Why do I feel the need to defend Kelly in front of somebody like Josh? <laughs> yeah, I can't say I blame you. I have the same reaction myself quite often. Every time I get near that guy lately, I find I have to swallow my tongue. Katie, what time's Justin done? Oh, oh, about 6 o'clock. Let's hurry and change. I want to say goodbye. Are you coming, Hill? Huh? Oh, yeah, I just, uh, I wanted to ask Tony something for a second. I'll be, I'll be right there. Okay, we'll see you later. Um, Tony, could I, uh, talk to you for a second? Sure. Um, I just wanted to ask you what the plans for tonight were. Oh, well, I was going to go home and take a shower and change, and then, uh, I figured I'd pick you up around 6.30. That way we could get out into the country and there'd still be some sunshine. Okay. Okay? Yeah, it sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> hello? Oh, yes. Hello, Bart. Uh, yes, the plans are still on. Uh, look, he's going to be leaving here in about 15 minutes. I'll be walking with him so it's easily identifiable. Yes, I would like a full and complete confidential report on all his activities. Oh, and Bart, while I have you on the phone, I know you normally send your accounts payable to Derek Colby. This time, send them to me directly. I'll pass them on to Mr. Colby. All right, nurse, I've left uh, detailed notes on all my patients for Dr. Bauer and uh, phone numbers where I can be reached in Chicago. Make sure he gets all that the minute he comes out of that meeting, all right? Thank you. We'd miss you. Yeah, well, you almost did. Uh, I'm off. I've got my suitcases in the car, and I'm driving straight to the airport. Oh, okay, thank you, my best. I really hope she and Smith will be coming back to Springfield with you when your vacation's over. Yeah, I hope so, too. Uh, look, Katie, I left uh, messages uh, uh, and phone numbers where I can be reached in Chicago. I'll either be staying with Laney and Carter or my father-in-law's, and in an emergency, I can be here in a matter of hours. I hope that doesn't happen. I want you to relax for a change. Enjoy yourself. Forget about the hospital, okay? Yeah, well, I'll try. Uh, listen, also, I want to thank you for relieving that uh, nurse on five who... You upset with me. I, I yeah. appreciate it. And thank you for tolerating my bad moods. Sure. Don't thank me. Just get rid of this pressure you're under. Yeah, well, I'm going to try. Anyway, I'll see you two when I get back. Oh, and I knew I was going to forget something. Look, there's. I jotted down some things for Dr. McIntyre. It's something I didn't have a chance to talk to her about today. Okay. Make sure she gets it. I will. Okay, sir. bye. Bye-bye. Glad we got a chance to see him before he left. Yeah, he's a good man. I admire him a lot. I guess I better get this over to Sarah. If I'm... Late. I mean, if she's not in her office, I may be just a few minutes, okay? Mm -hmm. okay. 